Thanks for coming. It's so nice to see. Can you hear me? Should I just speak louder? Okay, I can do that. Thanks for coming. It's so great to see friends and other friends from the community I've not met yet. I'm Thatcher Borman. I work at the college too on the online learning man. What? Can't hear me? Okay, I'm gonna. All right, thank you. All right, I underestimate my projection skills. So here we go. Here we go. How's that? Oh, oh, yes. Wow, I can hear myself now. It's like in my head. Awesome. My son asks me, how can I learn to listen to my heart? I've tried everything, hours, meditation, endless workshops, nothing helps. How can I learn to trust my heart? I want so much to be able to answer. Our everyday speech is filled with heart mostly spoken without heart connection. Take heart, lose heart, learn by heart. Ancient people knew not to trust anyone's prepared speech, knowing the heart connection wouldn't be there. How can I learn to trust my heart? Don't plan ahead. Be willing to respond without rehearsing. And if nothing comes, stay in the silence. That's a poem by Prescott poet, Mary Carvel Bragg, who I had the privilege and honor of knowing. This talk is about mentoring. Mentoring is listening first. That's what I say. That's what I've seen. Mentoring is listening. I am so blessed not only to be able to share something of myself with you precious people, but to live this idea of listening and mentoring every day, every day, more and more. So I think it was Sunday, my friend, was asking me, and he is the kind of friend who sends me 20 texts at once. You have those kind of people. It's like ding, 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 ding. And then, right? And he said, I finally look back because I have to review. And he said, I, I got the gist of it is something or other. I said, you know, I'm going to have to call you. I'm going to have to just... I want to understand how to respond. So I'm going to call you. And then he didn't answer. His voicemail wasn't set up. All that fun. And before I could talk to him, he texted me back and said, it just occurred to me. The answer to my question just came to me. I said, with a wise text emoji, the answers are always within you. He said, for me, it seems that when I ask one of the few persons I trust for impossible advice, this causes me to have epiphanies because you listen. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm so lucky to have this kind of thing, this mentoring work reflected in my life. Thank you all for showing up today. I think it's actually maybe 99% of the battle, but half sounded way better in a title. 
So thank you for showing up today. So showing up means it means that much to you. Showing up means it means something to actually be here, right? Nothing happens without this step. <laughs> Doesn't happen if you don't show up. What happens when parents don't show up for their kids? Showing up is important. In one way, it's the easiest part. Thank you for showing up. You got, in, you got out, of, out of bed, you got in the car, you walked and you showed up. You got your physical body here, but we know it's not the easiest part. It's probably the hardest part because you're giving something of your most precious resource, time. When you show up, you give of your time and mentoring means you're given a lot of time because it takes time to listen, right? So showing up and showing up is half the battle. What's the battle about? What's the battle? The battle for me is being worth showing up because I have a voice inside me that says, I'm not good enough. Why should I even bother? There's somewhere in me. There's always a little nagging voice. I'm not, why am I doing this? Somebody else should be giving this talk. And I show up to say, I am good enough. Showing up means I'm gonna be present and I'm gonna start there. Showing up is actually the battle itself to just show up physically and in presence. Listening is being present to someone else. So showing up, uh, it's pretty big. My experience, so I'll talk a little bit about my experience. Let's see, oh, hold on. So actually what I wanna do now is have you show up for each other. I know. Right, you're like, oh no, here's the audience participation part. Can I have a volunteer? I'm gonna saw one of you in half. <laughs> so, um, actually I'm gonna, um, before I do that, stand by, I wanna tell you, why I'm talking about this, because I've done, it's because I've been a mentor. My mentoring experience is mostly in group mentoring, working with the Boys to Men Mentoring Network. So, and as well as the Students of Leadership at Yavapai College, both of which have ongoing programs of mentorship in circles and weekend activities, weekend retreats. And I was recently privileged to lead, co-lead one of the, the recent uh, Students of Leadership retreat um, here at, for the Students of Leadership at Yavapai College. And which is something I could not have imagined in my wildest dreams doing. 15 years ago, when I was a young father of two boys and a girl who were growing up, coming of age and needing initiation into adulthood and looking to a father who didn't feel like he was ever initiated himself. How was I gonna do that? 
How was I going to show up for them? I wish I had had a mentor in my life. So many times I could have used someone to say, you're doing good work. I see you, you're in the right place. Someone to say, keep going. You're not the only one facing these challenges. Hearing that from someone I trusted would have meant a lot at times in my life. So I am blessed to live in a place where we have a Boys to Men mentoring group. Boys to Men mentoring is an international group that we have a chapter here that does mainly rites of, of passage initiation weekends and ongoing circle circles and in the schools as well as um, activities. And I was invited to without hardly, you know, without needing to show my qualifications. We do background checks, of course. But all I had to do was say, I want to be part of this. And the leader then, Richard Monsbach, said, okay, meet us at 8 o'clock <laughs> on a Friday up on the mountain at a camp with 40 other men. And that morning, when I first entered that space, circle up. We do a lot of this work in circles. And the check-in that morning with 40 other guys, mostly, I did not know these people. We check in like this, and name, how you feeling? What's an emotion that you're going on, or emotions right now? And why did you come here today? And then you're in. And when it came to my turn, I fell apart. I just blubbered like a baby. <laughs> like I feel like doing a lot. Like right now it's coming up too. And I just cried and then laughed and then we laughed together. And I said, yeah, I'm here because I don't know. I don't know yet. I said, I don't know is always an okay answer. If you really don't know, that's cool. I'm in, I hope. And I felt in front of 40 strangers that I was home, that I could be my authentic self. And I've been with it ever since, since 2010. And I'm on my healing journey. And it's been amazing. Participated in over 16 weekends with boys to men and now four weekends with the students of leadership. And believe me, I never thought I'd be doing this work. So I'm very blessed. And you know, the, all that, that happened on those weekends because they showed up. And what we tell, one of the things we start the weekend with, when we tell the boys is, these men are not being paid to be here. They're here because they want to be here. They showed up for you. We set the intention. We set the weekend that way. And then we have a hell of a lot of fun and do a lot of crazy stuff. And mostly, we listen. So we show up. And thank you for showing up. So... Maybe you showed up today because you want to learn about mentoring, or maybe you are a mentor and you just want to hear some more experiences. Again, mostly my experiences in group mentoring. Uh, it's not the one-on-one -on -one mentoring, though I get to do that too. And it's mostly with teenage boys. So that's my experience. My experiences of mentoring is my experience. It's the best I know. There's all kinds of different ways to do it. So 
maybe you want to learn something about mentoring. So today I'm going to invite you to notice your judgments. So being, what does that mean? I have a voice inside that says, I don't know what to say. Or I have a voice inside that says, he doesn't like me. I can see it in his eyes. Or he's feeling, oh man, Ooh, this is a tough audience, right? I'm in my comparing mind. And that intelligence we have is really useful for doing all the things we do and doing our work. But that I call those judgments that come up. Oh, I don't agree. I agree. All those things that come up. Those are great for getting our work done, but they're an impediment to listening. Being in your comparing mind is an impediment to listening. So I just invite you to notice your judgments. If, if you're not used to doing that, being kind of aware of what's going on inside, because to listen to another person, you really have to listen also to what's going on in you. Am I ready to listen? Am I really triggered right now because I'm hearing something that touches the wound in me? I better be aware of that before I speak and react. So I want to invite you. This is an invitation. Invitation is also part of this work. Everything we do is voluntary. It's important for every person that enters into a mentoring space, in my opinion, for that to be voluntary. Yeah, it has to be their choice. If they're forced to be there, it's going to be a different situation. And there's a time for those kind of situations too. Boys to Men works with people in circles of boys in, in juvie and other situations where they may not have a choice. But mostly it's all about agency in your life. So what do you see here? Trust. Anything. What do you see there in that picture? Support. Teamwork. Cooperation. Bonding. You're my kind of people. Wow. So I've showed this to my mom. Love my mom, of course. I mean, not of course, not of course. <laughs> I love my mom. She gave me a lot of good feedback. I showed her this picture. She said, looks like they're helping that kid to the ambulance. Wow, is he in trouble? He's blindfolded too. What's going on there? You can see different things here. What I heard you guys say is what I see too. This is a trust fall that we've done on the weekend. I see eight men supporting a young man, eight men of different ages, different backgrounds. They're in nature. This is a great place for healing. And they just did a trust fall. They caught him in his arms. And then they, I remember that. They rocked him and say, yeah, I just feel that. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome work. This is part of the weekend experience. Create a space for healing. So what is mentoring? I've looked and I've read a few things, heard a few things. It's, in, it's hard to nail down what mentoring is. How do you define mentoring? Wonder if I can get any feedback from you all. What is mentoring to you? Yes. Find their own answers. Helping a person find their own answers. Mm, helping someone find their own answers. Mm, thank you. Anything else? Coaching. Coaching. Helping them with some experience you have. Right on. Offering guidance. Offering guidance. 
a coaching idea, a guide, a counselor. What about teaching? Is a teacher a mentor? I see some teachers in the audience. Mentoring? Uh, yeah. Would be uh, setting an example, maybe? Setting an example, being a role model. Perfect. Yes. Providing a safe space. Providing a safe space. Nice. I think these are all feel like elements. Does those feel true to you? I think those are all part of it. I think the thing that I found and that feels true for me, whoops, um, what feels true is there's a connection, a direct connection between a mentor and a mentee. Connection of trust could be coaching, teaching, counseling, guiding, they can creating safe space. Those can all be part of it. Role modeling too. The difference between a role model, because a role model can be someone on TV you never met. You could use them as your role model, right? A coach could be instructive, but they may never really know you very well. The difference that's the added part of mentoring is that personal connection. I see you. I know who you are a little bit. Maybe it's something that happens spontaneously and it just happens for a little while. But you really see and come into relationship with someone and then you may never see them again. Or it could be a lifelong relationship. But that moment of connection and understanding and really hearing your story, I hear you. That's the mentoring part of it that makes it what it is, it makes it really special. Why is mentoring important? Is this like obvious or is it important? Why is it important? We are built for connection. So we got to exercise that natural. Okay, thank you. Why is it important? Yes, Jenny. <laughs> uh, many of us are pioneers and we did not have any sort of guidance um, growing up. So mm -hmm. we need to maybe be that for someone else. Mm, I really felt when you said that. Is that really meaningful for you to say that? Yeah. Yeah, Dave. I think it's establishing a trust. We need more you. trust in the world? <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of a duh question, but here's why it's not. Because I think our society more honors, especially in America, the self-made person who doesn't need help. Self-made, did it myself, didn't need anything. I stood on the mountain and I knew, right? And I don't know if that really works that well. And I don't think it's ever true. We all had some kind of mentoring. Maybe we mentored ourselves. So mentoring is important to remember that connection, the relationship, and I think it can change the world. Why do you want to be a mentor if you do? What are the motivations of a mentor? Does anyone here want to be a mentor? Okay, that's, wow. <laughs> All right. Yes, you. Yes, so I heard. So who said yes? Okay. How about in the back there? Will you tell us why? Do you know why? Several reasons. Oh, here we go. Um, help somebody's life be a little easier. And mm. because I love people. Mm. Thank you. Love. Heard the word love. Thank you for being willing to share that. 
Thank you. So I'm sure we all have different motivations. Why do we want to be a mentor? In one way, I think this is a good question. And one thing, one reason I, I, I don't think it matters. If you want to, then do it. You'll find out why and the reasons you're actually doing it along the way. In our Boys and Men Mentoring, I'll just say, we might ask you this question, and if it, you don't know, that's fine. Come on along, you'll find out why. We really value experience, having the experience before you have the training. If you're in and you have the experience and then you don't like it, all right, that's cool. Maybe it's not for you. But once you're in it and you want more, then there's training, there's, there's coaching, there's a lot of learning, there's some technique. And so I want to talk about that now. So this is, someone told me, one of my mentors said, you know, when I'm with someone and I'm listening, it's like being a strong stone on the ocean and the waves of listening wash up. We don't know if it's going to be a gentle current or a storm that suddenly someone's telling you something that's really intense. And your job as a mentor, this is just receiving. Hold that space. Hold that space for that to happen. And stay in the silence, perhaps, if you don't know what to say. How easy is it to stay in the silence? Let's try. I want you to pair up now. That's what I was <laughs> meant to do. I thought I was doing earlier. I'm doing it now. So turn to the person next to you. There's someone next to you. Let's pair up. Oh, yeah. We love it, right? Oh, what about in the back here? Ginny, can you pair up in the back here? So I want you to just do this. One, one of you is going to talk and one of you is going to listen for 30 seconds. I got my timer right here. For 30 seconds, you're going to practice listening. So the other person who's talking, just say something about yourself. Tell why you're, why you're here. Maybe what your experience with mentoring. Maybe where you're from. Does not matter. Talk constantly to that person for 30 seconds, start, I'll tell you when to go. Okay, for 30 seconds, I want that to one person to talk and one person to listen and see how you give attention to that person. Are you ready? Go. Done. <laughs> Thank you. You're very cooperative audience. So how did that work for you? For the person who was listening, how easy was it to stay quiet? Yes. Easy? Okay. Was it hard for anyone to not say anything? Yeah, okay, thank you. It was, why was it hard? Hold on. Um, of focusing on her story. Mm. For example, she told me how long she's been working here. I wanted to say, wow, I work at Yavakai College too for oh. this many years. Me too. It was a, this is not about my story <laughs> moment. <laughs> it's not about me. I'm listening now, yes. Mm, does it? How about your body language? body language? How about your facial expression? How about that? Mm, I do that all the time. Mm, I'm a big mm, 
<laughs> or any other feedback about what you just experienced? Yeah, Mr. McLaughlin. Um, I was, I realized I was sitting there thinking about what question I wanted to ask him. And so in the process of thinking about the question I wanted to ask him, I actually missed some of what he was saying. So I, I do that a lot. I get in my brain thinking about how am I going to react? What am I going to do? And then I'm not really listening, mm. just taking it all in as you my said, head. the waves. Yeah, whether it's those voices, what you might, what I call judgments or whatever is going on. Attention deficit disorder, you've heard of that. Listening is not easy. So thank you for that exercise. Bill, you can turn around unless you want to. Do. I'm sorry, we're done. We're done. I was like, we're ready for more. No, we're not switching. We're not switching. We're just going to move on. I know this is a very, we'll, we'll workshop this another time. So we're half right. The time just flies in these. So, so just uh, thank you for experiencing that, right? And the idea of, how do we listen? One of the way that my wife tells me and reminds me is literally empty your cup. Think of this listening as filling your cup and that cup is filled with, oh, I want to do this. I want to talk about what my experience is to share it. To, but I got to just keep emptying that cup. Keep up emptying that cup. So let's talk about this. So this is now we're getting down in, into the technique. Because there's some things, some tools, right? We, it's a skill. Listening is a skill. So this is one that I carry with me everywhere. Thank you. Another acronym for our life of acronyms. Frapping. It's a funny one. Frapping. Fixing, rescuing, advising, projecting. So I was in a circle and a boy said, I don't think... I'm ever going to have a friend again. I'm really afraid that I'm not going to have a friend again. I just lost a friend. I don't think I'm ever going to have a friend. What would you say? What's your reaction? You're going to have friends. You're only 12 years old. Of course, you're going to have lots of friends in your life. I bet you have friends. What about, you know, or I've lost those friends too. Man, that's happened to me. That's, let me tell you, when I was in school, how about, let me give you a hug. I feel so bad. Don't you just want to give them love when you hear a story like that? I'm so sorry. Mm. Big old hug. Or, you know what you got to do? At lunch today, go sit with some people you don't know and start talking to them about this. Are these bad intentions? Are these bad things to say? Kind of sounds like they come from the heart. I want to help. I want to help you. These are great intentions that are not helpful in times of listening and mentoring in the kind of situations I'm talking about. These are not help. They might not be helpful. Okay. First, projecting. Projecting is there's, you know, what I'm saying, my definition of projection here is saying, oh, I know what your story is. Me too. I've had that experience. Let me share my experience. Maybe we'll get some understanding. But when I assume, I'm assuming that I know their experience. I'm really assuming that I, it's kind of a way of saying, I understand, I know exactly what you're talking about. I understand how you feel. And that's a beautiful sentiment again. But how do we really truly understand a person's, another person's experience? Do I actually ever know how another person really feels? It doesn't feel true. 
And it can negate that person's experience to say, oh, me too. Me too. Your experience isn't that special. There's a lot, there's a lot of that comes into that. Great intentions. I want to relate to you, but maybe it doesn't work for listening. Advising. This one's easy, right? How easy is it? How is it a good idea to when your your friend says, "Should I break up with him?" Is your advice is giving advice in that situation pretty dangerous? There's a lot of danger there. There's, you know, how easy is giving advice? Do people want your advice? Right. You get that one. Advising. Though we have great advice. And maybe there's time for that. The time for giving advice is when it's, when is it? When you're asked for. So if you're asked, please give freely. But un, unsolicited advice is not the greatest. Rescuing. God, this is hard. It's hard not to rescue when you care so much and you're big hearted people. I just want to give them a hug or take them out for a hamburger and ice cream. We'll make it better. Now we're getting into fixing. I want to just make it better for you. What we're seeing is someone experiencing emotion. When we're listening in presence, they're having an experience of emotion. The healing and the coming out and for someone to witness and to be with you when you're having that emotion. That's where the healing can happen. When I wanna fix, I'm putting away the emotion. The whole point of listening here, one of the goals is to open the emotion. Fixing is pushing it down again. We'll just put this all away, it'll be fine. So that's, these are well-intended things that are not helpful for listening. So these I keep in mind, the frapping. And when you, when you can do this, you create safe space. Safe space is simply creating that space for listening, but there's some rules. So when we go and we do circles, when we're circling up, we have some agreements and we, we state those and we get agreements. Everyone agree to this? Yes. One of those, confidentiality. Everything, whatever says stay, said here, stays here. Two, we respect each other. We work on listening. We don't insult each other. We don't throw each other under the bus. And what's the third one, Bill? It's supporting, right. The third one. But that's the basic thing. We're creating safe space. And when you create safe space, people can throw up, throw up. People can just throw up freely their authentic self. So they can be their authentic self. And you can show up as your authentic self. Because we all have these masks. Masks we've developed over time, right? And they help us get our work done and get along in the world because the world is a very, can be a dangerous, harsh place. We do those because we, we need to be safe. But in a safe space, we can actually let down our mask and be who we are. And in that experience, some healing can happen. And in that way, we can create presence. Presence is maybe the most important thing in all this, is when you're present for someone else, they can really feel it. And you can come into relationship with someone. And then you can be seen see and be seen. A presence is so powerful, right? So I want to practice, do our next exercise. Yes, we're going to pair up again. You ready? So get with your partner again. <laughs> and 
This time, what I want you to do is be, this is a silent, another silent exercise with that person. Look in each other's eyes for 10 seconds. Whoa, wow, I know, right? Okay, you ready? And go. Okay. Yes, it was more than 10 seconds. Gotcha. So who wants to share what that was like? Who's willing to share what that was like for you? Mm. Jenny. Hi, um, my partner, it was full of joy and I could see it in her eyes. <sighs> you felt that. Awesome. I've done this exercise where it was four minutes. Oh, wow. And everybody cries. You, wow. There's a, there's a threshold you hit and then the tears come. And it, it's inexplainable. I think some people hit that threshold today. I agree. I've had, yes, same series. Yes, just following up. It was based on our earlier you're sharing with me. Mm -hmm. I felt safe and I was starting to tear up. It's been an emotional day and a lot of it had to do with Patrick's talk. Awesome, yeah. It feels very intimate and I'm very grateful that Mark looked in my eyes. Awesome, thank you all. Wow, huh? You want to just do that more, right? <laughs> With random people. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, someone you know intimately. I mean, not in, but know you'd spend a lot of time together. And this was different, right? Incredible. So presence. Did you feel your own presence? And did you feel the presence of the other person? It's powerful. It's so simple. Like showing up. But it's everything. It's showing up with your full presence. Presence is a lot in there, right? Attention. Attention. And when I started working on my attention, because I'd be like, squirrel. You know, thoughts. What I do with my attention is I'd work on it by staring really hard. Listening, kid. <laughs> How fun is that to be on the other end of? I learned to soften my gaze. Relax my own system so I can be in more presence so we can exchange and come into that. It's incredible. Just that. This is the listening. So being in presence is super important to the healing because you can feel it. It's a lot of wooey, wooey energy, this and all this. All you have to do. Whoa. Okay, better. Um, but all we had to do today is look at each other for 10 seconds and know that energy is real, whatever you want to call it. There's, there's energy. There's a feeling that happens between people. So where that is and how that works is everything to creating that relationship and trust. So we do circles. Here's some more skills. When we do circles and we create that space, first we check in. So everyone has a chance to be on equal footing, sitting in a circle. And we all get a chance to... <clears throat> open our vocal cords just a little. It's so important to loosen them up. Validating, key. When you're working with people, 
the, one of the hard parts for new mentors and old mentors and mid mentors is, wow, somebody said something. Now, what do I say? How do I respond? If I'm not frapping, what do I say? Validating is the first thing. Oh, that sounds hard. Oh, yeah. What's that like for you? I really hear what you're saying. Yeah, I hear you. Tell me more. Whoop. I want to skip to this because if there's one thing in the mentoring world that's a trope, it's this one. But it works. If you don't know what to say to someone and there's a moment, tell me more. Go with whatever's happening, right? Or, what does Mary Bragg say? Stay in the silence. Learn to be comfortable with silence. Stay in the uncomfortable silence. Because then, eventually, someone will talk, right? Validating. Validating someone's experience is assuring them that, yes, your experience is valid, whatever it is. So validating that they are, are real, right? Reflecting. Oh, I hear you saying that that's your experience. Is that right? You kind of reflect it back. That's another great technique, right? Reflecting back what they say, literally repeating back what they say sometimes, right? Reflecting. Keeping track of your body language and your stare. And are you slouching or are you in a posture where you know I'm listening? Right? Your body language is so key. Or if this is a sense that you're intimidating, sometimes, you know, being aside someone is better. You don't have to be in this direct intensity. Right. So being aware of body, body language and all those elements is huge. And then seeing what they're what's happening with their body language. Learning to listen with your eyes. Getting to the feeling when I'm working with when we're facilitating. Uh, the point is almost always getting to the emotion getting to the feeling because what you uh, happens a lot is someone starts saying something and you're asking them oh was that, when was that was that last tuesday okay and you start to pick out details and get lost and all that none of that matters and i say well i didn't like what they said when i went to the basketball game aha i heard something I didn't like that. I didn't like that. There's an emotion coming up. I didn't like something. Aha, there's a place where I can ask another question. What didn't you like about that? It wasn't about the basketball game. Find where the emotion comes out and then explore that if that's a safe place. And what now? What do you do with that? You found an emotion. Now, what are you doing? How's that? What's that like for you? Right? Oh. So in circles, so much of this work is, is done. And I'm so privileged to be part of circles today and every week. Bring this to every circle. That's what Richard always told me. First, bring your curiosity. Just be curious. Be curious about that person. And naturally, questions will come. You don't have to rehearse the questions after a while if you just unlock your natural curiosity. Listen, accept, encourage. Here's the mantra of boys to men. Listen, accept, encourage. Listen. Talked about that. Accept their experience, validate it, now encourage it. Whoa, 
what if they're talking about like i really want to go and drink a whole bottle of whiskey every night how do you encourage that well you don't encourage that you encourage something else you encourage what i found to be true and i'd love you know we all have different ways of approaching this what you encourage is tell me more about that that's also a part of encouraging wow encourage the f- talking about that encourage dis- helping that person discover why they want to go drink a bottle of whiskey every week so it doesn't mean necessarily encourage whatever behavior is going on but you encourage that person not like instead of saying you should not do that don't negate someone we try not to negate people's experience and thus negate them so listen accept encourage tell me more ray says yes you have a, a question i was just gonna say on the encouragement side mm-hmm. um if a lo- the boys we work with have a lot of issues and problems and oftentimes they don't have a father that's functional in the family they're in trouble with the law they may be in trouble with drugs and they may feel really bad about themselves and they're told they're losers and they're told they're failures and they're you know etc and put down Mm -hmm. constantly and so for me just finding something in that boy to latch on to some nugget that's inside of him that's what, what we call a piece of gold yeah, that's I'm gonna, inside I'm of just him. about to get and to then, that. And encourage, encourage him yeah. with respect to that particular issue to help him feel good about himself. Thank you, Chip. That's exactly, that's, that is, you're right on. The encouraging is also about the blessing. So my good friend says, how do we teach? By example, by example, and by example. Those are the three different ways. It's a joke. Um, are you ready? as a mentor to take responsibility and to be response able are you able to respond and blessing here's what i think you're talking about chip thank you this is the blessing what is the blessing the blessing is the encouraging and seeing someone and seeing the seeing the gold in that person we all have this beautiful soul that wants to come out and express itself in the world i believe that what's beautiful is and amazing is giving what i mean by blessing here is saying that's great you are doing so well in your work That's a beautiful piece of artwork you created. To be able to be here and express how you really felt is amazing. Thank you so much. That took courage. Sounds like giving a compliment, right? We call it a blessing. It's a blessing when it's really from the heart. And it's hard to give sometimes. When I give blessings, I usually the tears start to come when I really feel it. And sometimes it's hard to receive blessings. In the work we do on the weekends, especially, there's a point where it's a very culminating experience for the boys. They claim their power. And then it's time for blessings. And these boys who were maybe shut down at the beginning of the weekend did not know each other in the course of like 24 hours are now saying, as you get to give a blessing and get a blessing. So the person who's having the, that heightened experience gets to bless someone. And all the mentors hope it's them. <laughs> They actually kneel and and do all this stuff. But the point is, that person gets to be blessed. And what they usually say is, thank you for sharing your wisdom. Thank you for being there. 
you are so wise. You taught me something this weekend. I really appreciate it. And then a boy, another teenager comes up and they're all like, I want to bless. And they get up and they say, I bless you for your courage. I bless you for your open heart. I bless you for being there when I was when I was really having a hard time and for being able to say what you say. Bless you when you need to go talk to your parents about that. Amazing, miraculous blessings are given and received that are simply that, blessings that we give to each other. And they're so, so powerful and not always easy to receive the compliments we get in life. So it's a process of giving and receiving. Both are vital. Yes, please. I just want to build on that. I had a very judgmental and critical mom. I, could, I, I did everything really well, but it was never good enough. So the point is, um, when I was 21 years old, I was a senior at ASU, and I helped a girlfriend plan her wedding. I'm good at organizing events, and it just mm -hmm. fun. So after the wedding, um, I took stuff back to her mom's house. My friend was on her honeymoon. And as I tell people all the time, you can change your life so easily. She said five words to me absolutely changed my life. I was 21. I'm 73 now. And I still remember it. She said, Pat, you're a really capable person. That's all she said to me. And it absolutely changed my life because my inner thought then was, well, if that's true, what else could I do? <laughs> and you've done your whole so I amazing life. I graduated from college, traveled the world, married, raised two kids, earned a master's degree and a doctor's degree in psychology. And it's like, I'm stuck. <laughs> and, I, and she'll never know. You so know? capable. So capable. Did you know you were that, capable no, before that? Not at all, because that's never what I heard. Were you but capable I, before that? Well, of course. But it was, it. it was not yeah. seen. It was not seen and called out. Being so my seen. point is... Thank you. Five words changed a life. And my life has changed a lot of other people's lives. And it just keeps swirling around, yeah. you know? And, and it's not that hard. Yeah. It's really not. Thank you, Pat. So. Thank you so much. Right? The blessing. The blessings we get and give. So I'm going to close with this idea of the blessing. You're blessing me by your presence. Hopefully you receive some blessing today. It does take a village. It's a lot easier. I found, I found out what this means, right? This is another trope. Well, it takes a village, yes. Well, what it means to me is it's a lot easier to hear the wisdom and get the blessing from someone you don't know from someone, or not, not, don't know, but the uncles, the uncles of the village. Not in this, how easy is it get, to get those blessings from your mom and dad? Hard, a lot more complicated relationship. The village is where, where the initiation can take place because the uncles and the aunts do a different kind of blessing, a different kind of work than the parents can ever do. So it takes a village for a whole person to be born. So this means it's time for one more poem. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. This is a um, poem called, well, uh, yeah, this is a poem by a guy I met at, the, at a retreat with Michael Mead. I was so blessed to be at in 2014 and Greg Kimura. It's called Dangerous. 
I have to tell you, my friend, you are dangerous, lost in the beauty of choice, not knowing who you are or why you are here. You wander, wander life's garden, searching for ever sweeter fruits. But life is not choosing what you want to do. It's remembering what you came here to do. Unopened gifts spoil slowly over a lifetime, poisoning discernment, compassion, heart, Nothing is more dangerous to the world than an unlived life or a heart without compassion. There's a time for destiny to be born too late and it can, it can emerge from the chrysalis of self, a monster. Until you stand face to face before the mirror of true self and your small self cracks open like an egg leaking spent spirit into the earth like amniotic fluid until soul, freed from the prison of others' design, wails to the universe. Call it born again or dying to self or awakening. Until then, you remain dangerous. Thank you. Thank you for coming every day. Here today. Thank you so much. And if you want to connect to the Boys to Men Mentoring Network, please get in touch with the Teen Launchpad in Prescott. The Teen Launchpad in Prescott it can be found on the web at teenlaunchpad, I think, .org. And uh, it's a wonderful place that's um, right here on 6th Street.